13 Reasons Why by J. Asher, Cassette 1, Side B. Welcome back, and thanks for hanging out for part two. I wiggle the Walkman into my jacket pocket and turn up the volume. If you're hearing this, one of two things has just happened. A, you're Justin, and after hearing your little tale, you want to hear who's next. Or B, you're someone else, and you're waiting to see if it's you. Well, a line of hot sweat rises along my hairline. Alex Standle, it's your turn. A single bead of sweat slides down my temple, and I wipe it away. I'm sure you have no idea why you're on here, Alex. You probably think you did a good thing, right? You voted me. Best ass in the freshman class. How could anyone be angry at that? Listen. I sat on the curb with my shoes in the gutter. Near my heel, a few blades of grass poke up through the cement. Though the sun has barely started dipping beneath the rooftops and trees, street lamps are lit on both sides of the road. First, Alex. If you think I'm being silly, if you think I'm some stupid little girl who gets her panties in a bunch over the tiniest things, taking everything way too seriously, no one's making you listen. Sure, I am pressuring you with that second set of tapes, but who cares if people around town know what you think of my ass, right? In the houses on this block, and in my house several blocks away, families are finishing up their dinners, or they're loading dishwashers, or starting their homework. For those families tonight, everything is normal. I can name a whole list of people who would care. I can name a whole list of people who would care very much if these tapes got out. So let's begin, shall we? Curling forward, I hug my legs and lay my forehead on my knees. I remember sitting in second period the morning your list came out. Ms. Strum obviously had an amazing weekend because she did absolutely no prep work whatsoever. She had us watch one of her famously dull documentaries. What was it on? I don't recall. But the narrator did have a thick British accent. And I remember picking at an old piece of tape stuck on my desk to keep myself from falling asleep. To me, the narrator's voice was nothing more than background noise. Well, the narrator's voice. And the whispers. When I looked up, the whispers stopped. Any eyes looking at me turned away. But I saw that paper getting pasted around. A single sheet making its way up and down the aisles. Eventually, it's made its way to the desk behind me, to Jimmy Long's desk, which groaned as his body weight shifted. Any of you who were in class that morning, tell me Jimmy was taking a sneaky peek over the back of my chair, wasn't he? That's all I could picture as he whispered. You bet it is. I gripped my knees tighter. Jackass Jimmy. Someone whispered, you idiot jackass. I turned around, but I was not in a whispering mood. You bet what is? Jimmy, who will drink up attention any girl gives him, gave a half smile and glanced down at the paper on his desk. Again came the idiot whisper, this time repeated across the room as if no one wanted me in on the joke. When I first saw that list given to me in history class, there were a few names I didn't recognize, a few new students I hadn't met yet or wish wasn't sure I had their names right, but Hannah, I knew her name, and I laughed when I saw it. She was building quite a reputation in the short amount of time. Only now do I realize that a reputation started in Justin Foley's imagination. I tilted my head so I could read the upside-down title of the paper. Freshman class. Who's hot? Who's not? Jimmy's desk groaned again as he sat back, and I knew Miss Drum was coming, but I had to find my name. I didn't even care why I was on the list. At the time, I don't even think I realized, cared which side of the list I was on. There's just something about having everyone agree on something, something about you, that opens a cage of butterflies in your stomach. And as Miss Drum walked up the aisle, ready to grab that list before I found my name, the butterflies went berserk. Where is my name? Where? Got it. Later that day, passing Hannah in the halls, I took a look back as she walked by, and I had to agree. She definitely belonged in that category. Ms. Strum snatched the list away, and I turned back to the front of the room. After a few minutes gaining the nerve to look, I snuck a peek to the other side of the room. As expected, Jessica Davis looked pissed. Why? Because right next to my name, but in the other column, was hers. 
Her pencil tapped against her notebook at Morse code speed and her face was burning red. My only thought, thank God I don't know Morse code. Truth is, Jessica Davis is so much prettier than I am. Write up a list of everybody, every body part and you'll have a row of check marks the whole way down for each time her body beats mine. I disagree, Hannah, all the way down. Everyone knows a worst ass in the freshman class was a lie. Can't even consider it stretching the truth, but I'm sure no one cared why Jessica ended up on that side of the list, Alex. Well, no one. Except you. And me. And Jessica makes three. And a lot more than that, I'm guessing. We're about to find out. Maybe some point you think you were right in choosing me. I don't think so. But let me put it this way. I don't think my ass, as you call it, was the deciding factor. I think the deciding factor was revenge. I tear the blades of grass out of the gutter and stand up to leave. As I start walking, I rub the blades between my fingers till they fall away. But this tape is not about your motivation, Alex, though that is coming up. This tape is about how people change when they see your name on a stupid list. This tape is about... A pause in her speech. I reach into my jacket and turn the volume up. She's crinkling a piece of paper, smoothing it out. Okay, I just looked over every name. Every story that completes these tapes. And guess what? Every single event documented here may never have happened had you, Alex, not written my name on that list. It's that simple. You needed a name to put down opposite Jessica's, and since everyone at school already had a perverted image of me after Justin's little number, I was the perfect choice, wasn't I? And the snowball keeps a rolling. Thanks, Justin. Alex's list was a joke. A bad one, true, but he had no idea it would affect her like this. This isn't fair. And what about me? What did I do? How will Hannah say that I scarred her? Because I have no idea. And after people hear about it, what are they going to think when they see me? Some of them, at least two of them, I already know why I'm on here. Do they see me differently now? No, they can't, because my name does not belong with theirs. I should not be on this list, I'm sure of it. I did nothing wrong. So to back up a bit, this tape isn't about why you did it, Alex. It's about the repercussions of what you did. More specifically, it's about the repercussions to me. It's about all... Those things you didn't plan. Things you couldn't plan. God, I don't believe it. The first red star, Hannah's old house, there it is. But I don't believe it. This house was my destination one other time. After a party. An elderly couple lives there now. And one night, about a month ago, the husband was driving his car a few blocks away, talking to his wife on the phone when he hit another car. I shut my eyes and shake my head against the memory. I don't want to see it, but I can't help it. The man was hysterical, crying. I need to call her. I need to call my wife. His phone had disappeared somewhere in the crash. We tried using mine to call her back, but his wife's phone kept ringing. She was confused, too afraid to click over. She wanted to stay on the line, the line her husband had called her on. She had a bad heart, he said. She needed to know what he was okay. I called the police using my phone and told the man I would continue trying to reach his wife, but he told me I needed to tell her. She needed to know he was okay. Their house wasn't far. A tiny crowd had gathered, some of them taking care of the person in the car. He was from our school, a senior, and he was in much worse shape than the old man. I shouted for a few of them to wait with my guy till an ambulance arrived, then I left, racing toward his house to calm his wife. But I didn't know I was also racing toward a house Hannah once lived in. This house. But this time I walk, like Justin and Zach. I walk down the center of the road toward East Floral Canyon, where two streets meet like an upside-down T, just as Hannah had described it. The curtains in the bay window are shut for the night, but the summer before our freshman year, Hannah stood there with Kat. The two of them looked out to where I am now, and they watched two boys walk up the street. They watched them step off the road and onto the wet grass, slipping and tumbling over each other. I keep walking until I reach the gutter, pressing the toes of my shoes against the curb. I step onto the grass and just stand there. A simple, basic step. I don't slip, and I can't help wondering. Had Justin and Zach made it to Hannah's front door, would she have fallen for Zach instead of Justin a few months later? Would Justin have been wiped out of the picture? Would the rumors never have started? Would Hannah still be alive? 
The day your list came out wasn't too traumatic. I survived. I knew it was a joke, and the people I saw standing in the halls huddled around whoever had a copy. They knew it was a joke, too. One big, fat, happy joke. But what happens when someone says you have the best ass in the freshman class? Let me tell you, Alex, because you'll never know. It gives people, some people, the go-ahead to treat you like you're nothing but that specific body part. Need an example? Fine. B-3 on your maps. Blue spot liquor. It's nearby. I have no idea why it's called that, but it's only a block or so away from my first house. I used to walk there any time I had a sweet tooth, which means yes, I went there every day. Blue spot has always looked grimy from the sidewalk, so I've never actually gone inside. 95% of the time, blue spot was empty. Just me and the man behind the register. I don't think a lot of people know it's even there because it's tiny and squished between two other stores, both of which have been closed since we moved here. From the sidewalk, blue spot has always looked like a posting board for cigarette and alcohol ads, and inside, well, looks about the same. I walk along the sidewalk in front of Hannah's old house, and the driveway climbs up the gentle slope before disappearing beneath the weathered wooden garage door. Hanging over the front of the counter, a wire rack holds all the best candies. Well, they're my favorites anyway. And the moment I open the door, the man at the register rings me up. Cha-ching! Even before I pick up a candy bar, because he knows I never leave without one. Someone once described the man behind the counter as having the face of a walnut. And he does, probably from smoking so much. But having a name, having the name Wally, probably doesn't help. Ever since she arrived, Hannah rode a blue bike to school. I can almost picture her now, right here, backpack on, coasting down the driveway. Her front wheel turns as she pedals past me on the sidewalk. I watch her ride down a long stretch of sidewalk, passing trees, parked cars, and houses. I stand and watch her disappear. Again. Then I slowly and turn and walk away. Honestly, in all the times I've been to Blue, Blue Spot, I don't think I've heard Wally utter a single word. I'm trying to remember a single hello or hey, or even a friendly grunt. But the only sound I ever heard him utter was because of you, Alex. What a pal. Alex, that's right. Yesterday, someone shoved him in the halls. Someone shoved Alex into me. But who? That day, as usual, a bell jingled above the door as I walked in. Cha-ching went the register. I picked out a candy bar from the rack on the counter, but... I can't tell you which one because I don't remember. I caught Alex to keep him from falling. I asked him if he was okay, but he just ignored me. Picked up his backpack and hurried down the hall. Did I do something to piss him off? I wondered. I, I couldn't think of anything. If I wanted to, I could tell you the name of the person who walked in while I searched my backpack for money. I do remember, but he was just one of the many jerks I've run into over the years. I don't know, maybe I should expose all of them, but as far as your story goes, Alex, his action, his horrible, disgusting action, was just an after-effect of yours. Plus, he's got a whole tape to himself. All to himself. I wince. What happened in that store because of Alex's list? No, I don't want to know. I don't want to see Alex. Not tomorrow. Not the day after that. I just don't want to see him, or Justin, or that ass, jackass Jimmy. God, who else is involved in this? He threw open the door to Blue Spot. Hey, Wally, he said, and he said it with such arrogance, which sounded so natural coming from his mouth. I could tell it wasn't the first time he said it that way, acting like Wally was beneath him. Oh, Hannah, hey, he said. Didn't see you there. Did I mention I was standing at the counter, visible to anyone the moment they opened the door? I acknowledged him with a tiny smile, found my money and dropped it into Wally's wrinkled hand. Wally, as far as I could tell, didn't respond to him in any way. Not an eye catch or a twitch or a smile. His usual greeting for me. I followed the sidewalk around a corner away from the residential streets on my way to Blue Spot. It's amazing how a town can change so much in one corner. The houses behind me weren't big or fancy, very middle class. But they sit back to back with the part of town that's been slowly falling apart for years. Hey, Wally, guess what? His breath came from just over my shoulder. My backpack was resting on the counter while I zipped it shut. Wally's eyes were focused down, just beyond the edge of the counter near my waist, and I knew it was coming. 
a cupped hand smacked my ass. And then he said it. Best ass in the freshman class, Wally, standing right here in your store. There's more than a few guys I can picture doing that. The sarcasm, the arrogance. Did it hurt? No. But that doesn't matter, does it? Because the question is, did he have a right to do it? And the answer, I hope, is obvious. I knocked his hand away with a quick backhand swipe that every girl should master. And that's when Wally emerged from his shell. That's when Wally made a sound. His mouth stayed shut, and it was nothing more than a quick click of the tongue. But that little noise took me by surprise. Inside I knew, Wally was a ball of rage. And there it is, the neon sign of Blue Spot Liquor. On this block, only two stores remain open. Blue Spot Liquor and Restless Video across the street. Blue Spot looks just as grimy as the last time I walked by it. Even the cigarette and alcohol ads look the same. Like the wallpaper in the front window. A brass bell jingles when I open the door. Same bell Hannah listened to whenever she came in for a candy fix. Instead of letting it swing shut behind me, I hold the edge of the door and slowly push it shut. Watching it ring the bell again. Can I help you? Without looking, I already know it's not Wally. Why am I disappointed? I didn't come to see Wally. He asks again a little louder. Can I help you? I bring my I can't bring myself to look toward the front counter. Not yet. I don't want to imagine her standing there. At the back of the store, behind the wall of see-through doors, the refrigerated drinks. And even though I'm not thirsty, I go there. I open one of the doors and take an orange soda, the first plastic bottle I touch. Then I walk to the front of the store and pull out my wallet. Wire rack loaded with candy bars hangs from the front counter. These are the ones Hannah liked. My left eye begins to twitch. Is that all? he asks. I place my soda on the counter and look down, rubbing my eye. The pain begins somewhere above my eye, but it goes deeper behind my eyebrow, a pinching I've never felt before. There's more behind you, the clerk says. You must think I'm looking at the candy. Grab a butterfinger from the rack and place it next to my drink. Put a few dollars on the counter and slide them over to him. Cha-ching! He slides back a couple of coins and I notice a plastic name tag stuck to the register. Does he still work here, I ask? Wally? Clerk exhales through his nose. Day shift. When I leave, the brass bell jingles. I swung my backpack over my shoulder and probably whispered, Excuse me, but when I moved around him, I purposefully avoided his eyes. I had the door in sight, ready to leave, when he grabbed my wrist and spun me around. He said my name, and when I looked into his eyes, the joking was gone. I yanked my arm, but his grip was tight. Across the street, the neon sign of restless video flickers erratically. I know who Hannah's talking about now. I've seen his wrist-grabbing stunt before. It always makes me want to grab him by the shirt and push him until he lets the girl go. But instead, every time... Pretend not to notice. What could I do anyway? Then the jerk let go, put his hand on my shoulder. I'm only playing, Hannah. Just relax. Okay, let's dissect what just happened. I thought about it the entire walk home from Blue Spot, which is probably why I don't remember which candy bar I bought that day. I sit on the chipped curb outside Blue Spot, setting the orange soda next to me and balancing the butterfinger on my knee. Not that I have an appetite for anything sweet. So why did I buy it? Was it only because Hannah used to buy candy from the same rack? And why does it matter? I went to the first Red Star and the second. I don't need to go everywhere and do everything she says. First his words, then his actions. Statement number one. I'm only playing, Hannah. Translation. Your ass is my play toy. You might think you have a final say over what happens to your ass, but you don't. At least not as long as I'm only playing. I tap one end of the candy bar, making it teeter-totter on my knee. Statement number two. Just relax. Translation. Come on, Hannah. All I did was touch you with no indication that you wanted me to touch you. If it'll make you feel better, go ahead. You can touch me wherever you'd like. Now let's talk about his actions, shall we? Action number one, grabbing my ass. 
interpretation. Let me back up and say that this guy had never grabbed my ass before. So why now? My pants weren't anything special. They weren't overly tight. Sure, they were slung a little low and he probably got a hip shot, but he didn't grab my hips. He grabbed my ass. I'm starting to understand. I'm starting to see what Hannah means. And that opens up a black hole in the pit of my stomach. Best lips with another category on that list. Alex, am I saying your list gave him permission to grab my ass? No, I'm saying it gave him an excuse. An excuse was all this guy needed. It wasn't until that list came out that I even noticed Angela Romero's lips. But after that, I became fascinated by them. When I watched her give speeches during class, I had no idea that what words came out of her mouth. I just watched those lips move up and down, mesmerized when she said things like slippery slope, which behind her lips exposed the underside of her tongue. Action number two. He grabbed my wrist, then put his hand on my shoulder. You know, I'm not even going to interpret this. I'm just going to tell you why it pissed me off. I've had my butt grabbed before, no big deal. But this time it was grabbed because someone else wrote my name on a list. And when this guy saw me upset, did he apologize? No. Instead, he got aggressive. Then in the most condescending way, he told me to relax. And then he put his hand on my shoulder as if by touching me, he'd somehow comfort me. Here's a tip. If you touch a girl, even as a joke, and she pushes you off, leave her alone. Don't touch her anywhere. Just stop. Your touch does nothing but sicken her. The rest of Angela was nowhere near as mesmerizing as her lips. Not bad, just mesmer not mesmerizing. Then last summer at a friend's house, we played spin the bottle after a bunch of us admitted we were spin the bottle version virgins, and I refused to let the game end till my spin landed on Angela, or till her spin landed on me. When that happened, I pressed my lips agonizingly slow and precisely against hers. There are some sick and twisted people out there, Alex. And maybe I'm one of them. But the point is, when you hold people up for ridicule, you have to take responsibility when other people act on it. Later on, Angela and I made out on her back porch. I just couldn't get enough of those lips. All because of a list. Actually, that's not right. You didn't hold me up for ridicule, did you? My name was in the hot column. You wrote Jessica's name in the not column. You held Jessica up for ridicule. And that's where our snowball picks up speed. Jessica, my dear, you're next. I pop open the Walkman and pull out the first tape. In the smallest pocket of my backpack, I find the next tape. The one with blue marker number three written in the corner. I drop that into the deck and snap the door shut.